Hello and welcome back to Higher Ideas Podcast. So today I'm going to keep breaking down my Occupy experience that I talked about in podcast number 002. And I'm going to talk about something I didn't even really mention in my overview of my experience there, which is agents, uh, intelligence agents. Now, we know for sure from history and freedom of information documents or just releases of information from the past, we know that agents are pretty much always active in any significant movement or any significant event in society. Uh, it seems to be their job to be there. So you can always assume that they will be there. Now the Occupy camp I was on was relatively small. It was no Wall Street Occupy. It was uh, pretty modest, I'd say. And it didn't seem like the kind of camp where you would see an agent. So when I heard people on the camp talking about, oh, there may be agents here, I think that guy's an agent, uh, there's some shifty stuff happening around here, uh, I just kind of took it with a grain of salt and remembered that we were not the center of the universe and there really wasn't that much going on at the camp at that time that was worthy of much investigation besides maybe compiling a list of everybody there. So I just kind of stayed on guard not to reveal my identity too much and um, just sort of uh, assumed that if they were there, they were probably there with informational-based interests, probably not to disrupt. And uh, as long as you're vigilant and open and transparent and expect the same of others, what damage could they do? So I kind of had my guard down in a way. I was not judging everyone, what if you're an agent, what if that person's an agent. I was just approaching every new person as a person and giving them a chance. And that's how I met, let's call her Nicole. I'm changing her name just in case she's not an agent and maybe just a liar or something. I certainly don't want to get her into any trouble. So let's call her Nicole. This was maybe a week and a half into the occupation, maybe a little more. And um, things around the camp were starting to feel a little bit frustrating. Uh, I was feeling a very serious need to have direct contact with New York. Uh, I felt that we often didn't know if we were doing things right, how to deal with certain situations that were coming up, like disruptive people, etc. There was a lot of questions I personally wanted to ask New York, and we kept asking for this, and the quote-unquote leadership of our camp kept saying, oh yeah, we're on it, we're, we're trying to set up a Skype connection, it'll happen, don't worry about it, we'll get New York on the line, and we'll have a constant feed with them. And that was interesting, but nothing was happening. So I had actually started trying to make a direct connection with New York through Twitter, and I was still waiting on some success. When I started hearing whispers on the camp about an envoy being sent from New York, an envoy was on the way. Someone was being sent by New York to help us, to see how we were doing, to learn from our experience and bring it back to New York, and to help us uh, fill in the cracks where we went wrong. And that was awesome. But a couple days went by and we never sort of were introduced to this person. We never uh, had the fanfare of welcome, welcome our friend from New York. This was supposed to be happening sometime soon. And one day I was sitting at a table outside the media tent and uh, just waiting for some sort of task to come around or someone I could talk to or help that day. A young lady sat in front of me and she was sort of just waiting too. I introduced myself, she introduced herself, Nicole. And very quickly, she identified herself as the envoy from New York. She certainly had a New York accent, she certainly was a fiery girl, and uh, it was not hard to believe that she was from an Occupy camp. So I was excited, oh my god, I've been waiting to meet you, I've been trying to contact you guys, thank you for coming. Uh, what what can you tell us? How how do you think we're doing here? What can we do better? I, I ha it was full of questions, and that led into an entire day, pretty much, of uh, talking with her, taking notes, bringing other people into the conversation, having uh, questions and ideas thrown around for actions we could take, things we can correct. Uh, it, was, it was very exciting and revitalizing that day. I was very happy this happened and that I happened to run into her. What luck I had. What luck I had to finally have some movement on this issue that I was trying to personally get done myself. As we talked throughout the day and got a little more comfortable, she started dropping facts about herself. 
One of them stood out in particular. She told me she was a part of Anonymous as well. Now that stuck out like a sore thumb in my mind, because for lack of a better term, she was very street. And she certainly didn't seem like someone who could hack a computer, or she barely seemed like she knew how to use the internet, to be honest. Of course, that's a face judgment, but I'm a nerd. I've been around a lot of nerds all my life, both women and men, and I would not have pinned her as any kind of nerd. But still, um, I was happy to see her, I was happy to be talking to her, so I didn't question it, I just l let her speak. And she went on to tell me about actions that were being planned very soon from Anonymous, because I was asking, what is Anonymous doing to support this movement? It seems like they've been in the background since the beginning. And she said, yeah, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, they're going to be attacking this, they're going to be attacking that. And that kind of scared me, because I'm not into using attacks to achieve goals for a non-violent movement. This is what she said, and I accepted it, but I still kind of kept it in the back of my mind as something suspicious. And the day went on. Eventually, a young man came by who was very tall, uh, very uh, well-built, almost like a politician. He had a very politician-like vibe. He was very intelligent-looking. He had a sharp look in his eye. And he was also very fiery. But there was something unstable about him. I didn't like that guy too much. I, it was fine having him around, but I kept my guard up around him because he would throw out some very extreme ideas for actions that we could take. She and him got along like two peas in a pod. They jumped right onto each other and started riffing about all sorts of extreme acts that we could take at the camp that would probably get whoever took it in trouble and probably paint a bad image for the camp. So I started getting uncomfortable with the conversation and I excused myself with a list I had already compiled of very worthy things to do and address. Uh, and I sort of let her go about her day. But before I did, I asked her, uh, Nicole, would you join me at tonight's General Assembly so I could introduce you to everyone so everyone could have access to you? I was not introduced to you. I was not told about you. And we really should know that you're here and who you are. And she said, fine, of course. And I planned that we would go over the list after I introduce her in front of the General Assembly of things we can start acting on and change on our camp based on the feedback of New York. So the day went on, towards the end of the day, the uh, General Assembly built up, and I went to get her. We waited in the group, I got myself on the list for speakers, and, uh, you know, everything seemed to be on track. Until, about 30 seconds before our turn came up, she suddenly got very nervous, and she said, you know what, I don't like this, I don't think I want to go up there, I, I don't think this is a good idea. And she looked like she wanted to run away, to be frank. And this was very strange because she had been very fiery and passionate and she had been a, a sort of uh, loud and proud type of character all day long. Not the person you would paint as being crowd shy. In fact, a crowd had gathered around her that day and she kept talking. Small crowd, but a crowd nonetheless. So that caught me very off guard, especially when we were seconds away from being presented in front of the entire group. I tried to convince her come on, we're, we're about to do this, you agreed to do this, why, why, why are you getting cold feet? But she would, not li she would not be convinced, she got more and more agitated, saying, no, no, I can't, I can't go up there, I can't go up there, and she actually left. She left me there. And I didn't go up, I, I had nothing anymore. Uh, I decided, okay, well, sorry, take me off the list, because uh, never mind, you know? And this was very strange to me. And I went home that day and pondered, the entire day, the entire conversation we had. Every day when I would go home from camp, I couldn't sleep and I would just reflexively process everything that had happened that day. And this time, and this time all my thoughts were about her and the conversation we had. And as I looped and looped and looped our conversation, I saw all the holes in her story. That gave me pause. Wait a minute, is, it, is this girl a liar? Why would someone come to the camp, pretending to be from New York, just to lie, give us some pretty decent input, and then sort of shy away from being presented? Maybe she's a pathological liar, maybe she has mental issues, I don't know. But she certainly seemed very convincingly from New York, so <laughs> she might be a good actor too. I, I, I was very confused at this point. Just by luck, 
The next morning, I had received a reply from New York. I had made contact, finally, myself, directly with New York. And the first thing I asked was, Do you know a girl named Nicole? We have a girl in our camp named Nicole who claims to be sent by you guys. Can you ask around and tell us who Nicole is? And the re reply came quickly, We don't know any Nicole, and we did not send anybody. We don't even know that you guys need anybody. Haha. <laughs> well, I was ready to go to work that day. I couldn't wait to get to camp and find Nicole and at least ask her, what are you doing here? What is your intention? Who are you? But wouldn't you know it, when I got to camp, she wasn't there. And she wasn't there the next day. She never showed up again. She disappeared. Almost as if she knew that she was caught. Very interesting. So if you ask me, that was probably an agent. I had a run-in with an agent. And it was not at all what I thought it would be. It seems that she was trying to implant herself into the group, give good feedback, but also give very bad ideas that would get us in trouble. Little did she know she would run into someone like me, the worst kind of person she could possibly run into, the kind of person who questions everything, questions everyone, incessantly ponders every fact, and finds the slightest hole in the stitching of your lies. And she was not a good seamstress. <laughs> she had some pretty big holes. I could be wrong. Maybe she was really Nicole. Maybe she was really an anonymous. Maybe she was sent from New York and there was just a mix-up. But then why disappear? Right when I'm about to confront you. Why run away when you're about to be presented as Nicole from New York in front of cameras, in front of a live stream, and in front of everyone. At the least she was a liar, and at worst she was an agent. Now I don't have any particular lesson or thought to pull out of this story. I'm just putting it out there as an interesting anecdote. But I guess we can learn the benefit of a critical mind. What happened to me there was the benefit of a lifetime of making sure I question everything, of not accepting anything at face value, of running everything through my brain and asking my own mind, does this make sense? Instead of someone else says this makes sense, so I'll trust that opinion. No. If you keep an active mind, if you keep questioning every fact that comes into your mind and running it through logical processes, you will build a very, very good lie detector. It'll be very hard to bullshit you, and you will have a gut feeling, even if you can't put your finger on what's wrong, if there is ever something wrong being presented to you, you will get the gut feeling until you figure it out. I guess it's like doing the math instead of just accepting the answer someone gave you. And it might seem like a lot of work to do this all the time, but it's a great habit to keep. Because when you run into situations like this where people try to lie to you or pass something by you, you won't even have to consciously do it. Your mind will just know that something doesn't add up because it'll be so used to uh, analyzing. So analyze everything. Just practice that. From now on, if you don't do that, from now on, try to do that in your everyday life. Every time someone tells you something, run it through your mind. Does that make sense? Do I agree with that? Is that just? Is that right? Does that balance out? If you ever run into an agent, or a liar, or a huckster, you'll have a gut feeling. And it might just save your ass. <laughs> and uh, that's good enough for me. That's it. Till next time.